In the video today, we're answering a viewer question because Jeremy W. asks us, is it true that drinking tea made from twice boiled water is bad for you? And just before we get into that, I want to say that this episode is brought to you by Curiosity Stream, a subscription streaming service that offers over 2,000 documentaries and non-fiction titles. Unlimited access, starting at just $2.99 a month and 30 days for free. Link in the description below. More on them in a bit. So there's this rather persistent idea that reboiling water, i.e. boiling water two or more times and allowing it to cool in between while making a cup of tea is potentially harmful to your health, with some going so far as stating that regularly doing this even drastically increases your chances of getting cancer. The general reasoning behind why this is purportedly the case goes something like this. When we boil water, the chemistry of it changes, which is usually a good thing as it boils out of volatile compounds and dissolves gases. This is why boiling water mostly ensures that it's safe to drink. If water is left boiled for too long or is reboiled, the chemical compounds change for the worst. By leaving your water to boil down, you're actually concentrating many harmful chemicals instead of getting rid of them. The same thing happens when you reboil water, as the compounds concentrate and increase the risk of ingesting certain chemicals. The website we gleaned this particular quote from goes on to suggest that reboiling water will expose you to toxic amounts of things like arsenic, fluoride, and nitrates, and even includes the words reboiled water causes cancer right there in the URL. Countless others concur, positing that consuming reboiled water is akin to drinking filthy bilge water filtered through a hobo's socks that have been previously stored at Ground Zero at Chernobyl. So, is it actually true that drinking reboiled water is actually bad for you? In short, well, no. At least not so long as your water is reasonably safe to drink in the first place and you aren't the victim of some wildly unrealistic scenario. Don't believe us? Well, keep on watching. To begin with, as we've already talked about in our video on why some ice cubes are cloudy and others are clear, the kind of water that pours freely from our faucets contains innumerable impurities, some of which are, at least from a practical standpoint for most home consumers, impossible to filter out entirely, such as nitrates. However, the concentration of these impurities is not generally particularly harmful in the normally negligible quantities that you find in common tap water. So, unless you currently happen to live in one of those places where the tap water catches fire or contains approximately the same concentration of lead as, well, pure lead, for the most part, your drinking water is probably pretty safe as is. So this brings us to the chief argument generally leveled against twice boiled water. That's the concentration of impurities. When some of the water evaporates as the water boils, while some impurities are removed, others remain, called non-volatile substances, and are now more concentrated than when the volume of the liquid was greater. Yes, all of this is absolutely true. So you'd think at that point, well, case closed, right? Twice boiled water is definitely bad for you. Except, well, this water is actually still not bad for you, unless it was already bad for you to begin with, i.e. you have pre-existing problems with your drinking water. Why? Well, aside from the fact that you aren't likely letting the water boil down significantly before brewing your cuppa, in fact, many don't even bring the water to full boil before turning off the heat and pouring, even if you did, it wouldn't matter, except for in outlandishly unrealistic scenarios. You see, if you drank the entire teapot worth of water straight, say five mugs worth, rather than boiling it at all, it would not have hurt you and would have contained more impurities than the same full teapot boiled down to one mug worth of water, as the impurities that would have been otherwise boiled off would still be present in the original five mugs of water. The key point here is that boiling the water does not add any impurities. It actually subtracts some. So whether five mugs worth of unboiled water or one mug from five boiled down, you still have mostly the same amount of impurities. The only real difference here is you'll be more hydrated if you drank the five mugs. Now, potentially, if you are always doing this and using tea as your primary hydration source, continually getting five times the impurities for one mug of water may be an issue depending on the purity of your water source, except even the biggest of tea drinkers aren't boiling off anywhere close to this amount of water when making tea, and the more tea you drink, the less will be evaporated off in between. Again, beyond that this is more an issue of time boiling and potential evaporation time rather than the number of boils, no one actually does 
this, not the least of which because, in the most extreme case, it would end up making your tea taste awful, and at a certain point, you'd likely even get noticeable sediment at the bottom of the kettle. In more realistic boiling scenarios, the extremely minuscule amount of extra impurities per mug isn't going to hurt you, and isn't likely to be something you'll taste the difference on. We've got more on that in a bit. But what about the state of the water the second time you boil it? Couldn't there be impurities being added in between? While it is possible that a kettle without a lid left sitting on the stove or counter might get a bit of dust or the like in the previously boiled water, the composition of it isn't likely to change much in the interim between boiling, outside of scenarios like a construction site or something like that. In most office buildings or your home, this isn't going to be an issue, and even less so if your kettle has a lid. Any microbes that find their way in there would likely be killed off during the boiling process, so there's no health issue there either. The only potential problem area left, then, would be the water picking up something from the kettle itself. But studies have shown that while things like iron and nickel and the like do leach into foods in exceptionally small quantities when you heat them in something like a stainless steel container, this is not so much the case when discussing leaching into tap water alone, particularly if you've used the container several times before, i.e. it's not new. Unsurprisingly, most kettles are made from extremely non-reactive substances, at least to tap water. Because of this, whether you boil the water once or several times, any impurities picked up from your kettle should be negligible in the vast majority of cases. If they're not, that's an issue with a faulty kettle and is likely an issue with once boiling water as well. Easy solution there is buy a better kettle. That said, if you brewed the tea in, for instance, the stainless steel kettle itself rather than your mug, then boil and let it sit, there will be some leaching similar to when cooking certain food items, with your mild varying depending on what exactly the kettle is made from and what you're putting into the tea. But when discussing using that brewed water later for reboiling and brewing again, this once again gets into the realm of nobody does that. This certainly isn't the scenario people are talking about when discussing that it is bad to use twice boiled water. This is not to mention the fact that the impurities picked up from the kettle aren't necessarily inherently bad for you at the quantities we're talking about here. Indeed, some of these things might actually be good for you, such as if you're low on iron and getting iron leached from the kettle. In the end, there's a reason not a single public health agency in the world advises against drinking twice boiled water. Outside of elaborate scenarios that no one actually does, kettles that are dangerous to boil water in even once, or water that already has unsafe levels of some compound twice or thrice boiled water is not going to cause you any harm. Another argument often leveled against the idea of using twice boiled water in tea is that it supposedly affects the taste. Now, as a Brit, I can tell you that some people take making tea very seriously and feel there is a genuine art to making a good cup. However, the idea of what exactly constitutes a good cup of tea, like your favorite Power Ranger perhaps, varies dramatically from person to person. For reference, the co-author of this piece, Carl Smord of Fact Fiend fame, you may know him, personally is quite partial to Builder's Tea, and indeed also the Green Power Ranger. Builder's Tea is a colloquial term used to refer to tea that is strong, milky, and loaded with sugar, all things that real tea drinkers would consider an affront to their very sense of being, preferring nothing less than the finest Lapsang Souchong filtered through the silken robes of a well-toned Shaolin monk. As for the other author of this piece, Davin, if you've ever watched our Brain Food show live streams, you'll know that his favorite is Earl Grey with nothing added. Not because he likes Earl Grey or indeed tea at all, but rather so that he can say Earl Grey hot at his kettle, then make replicator sounds and drink it out of one of his Picard cups. Unsurprisingly, there are quite literally arguments on every part of the tea-making process, up to and including whether or not it's okay to clean the teapot that you use to make it. As an example of the kind of hearty debate the topic inspires, one of the most controversial things George Orwell ever wrote was an article aptly titled A Nice Cup of Tea, in which he, amongst other things, mocked the idea of putting sugar in tea, saying, how can you call yourself a true tea lover if you destroy the flavor of your tea by putting sugar in it? He also insisted that milk should be added after the tea. This latter is arguably one of the most common points of contention amongst tea drinkers, inspiring everything from comedic raps to actual scientific studies. For the curious, science says that milk should be added first because if you don't, the hot water causes the milk to heat unevenly, which causes the proteins to denature, meaning they lose their structure and 
clump affecting the taste, whereas the rapper one Doc Brown says that you must be out of your mind to put the milk in first, adding that doing so makes his heart burst. Needless to say, when discussing what is better tasting tea or not, science and what George Orwell think have little to no bearing. You just like what you like after all. Now, before we get into this any deeper, I want to thank Curiosity Stream for sponsoring this video. Curiosity Stream is a subscription streaming service that offers over 2,000 documentaries and non fiction titles from some of the world's best filmmakers, including exclusive originals. If you're looking for a specific recommendation from me on that platform, well, if you enjoy this video and the kind of myth busting that we're doing right now, I'd recommend you check out the documentary called Vitamania, which looks at the whole vitamin supplement industry from a super scientific perspective trying to cut through all of the marketing junk basically telling you to go and buy tons of vitamins. It's available on many platforms, web app, Roku, Android, Xbox One, Smart TV, iOS, Chromecast, Amazon Fire, Amazon Kindle, Apple TV, and it's also available worldwide. Get unlimited access starting at just $2.99 a month. And for you guys, the first 30 days are completely free if you sign up at curiositystream.com forward slash brainfood and use the promo code brainfood all one word, lowercase, during the sign-up process. It's a great way to support this show, keep us making more videos, and they're just a great fit for this show. So please check them out, link below, and let's get back to the video. Okay, so let's now talk about the twice-boiling tea part and that it purportedly ruins the taste of the tea. Beyond the subjectivity of such a statement, the funny thing is it's not actually clear that twice-boiling water does affect the taste of tea. While, as we mentioned, in an extreme case of doing something crazy like boiling down 20 liters of water to a single cup's worth will undisputedly drastically affect the taste of the tea due to concentration of impurities, when talking about a more realistic scenario of something like twice or thrice-boiled water, Water that barely has any of it evaporated off in between, and generally fresh water added before each boiling, diluting the mixture, it's not so clear there is a difference in taste happening, other than perhaps in people's heads. While we could not find any studies on the idea of twice boiled water changing the taste of tea, we can at least look at the mechanism involved to get an idea of whether it's likely or not that such a taste shift is occurring. For starters, many claim the taste difference comes about due to twice boiled water having less dissolved oxygen in it, referencing the fact that as the water temperature increases, the solubility of oxygen decreases. This latter fact, absolutely true, the former though is not. You see, at 100 degrees Celsius, boiling point, the concentration of dissolved oxygen, assuming normal atmospheric pressure, will ultimately be near zero, whether it's once or tenth boiled water. How long you boil the water does come into play somewhat, but even then the differences are minimal, with dissolved oxygen levels at one atmosphere and zero degrees Celsius on the order of 15 parts per million, compared to approximately 5 parts per million at 50 degrees Celsius and near zero parts per million at 100. But my tea tasting palate is extremely refined and able to detect even the smallest of changes of dissolved oxygen levels, you might say while idly cleaning your monocle. Once the water is allowed to cool back down, its dissolved oxygen levels will once again begin to rise to normal levels given atmospheric pressure and temperature. CO2 levels, which can affect the taste, will also return to normal. Given this, the second time you bring water back up to the boil, things like oxygen level are not going to be any different than the first, assuming equal boiling points and or temperature levels. That's not to mention that the idea that more oxygen equals better tasting gets into the aforementioned debate on what does or does not taste better when making tea. Everyone's got their own preferences. And if you're curious, there have been studies, Pangborn and Bertolero 1972, Forston Alley 1998, that have indicated that dissolved oxygen doesn't actually noticeably impact the flavor of water, though it should be noted that both of those studies weren't dealing with brewing tea, and it is possible, even probable, that dissolved oxygen could be interacting with elements of the tea to change the flavor, similar to what happens with wine. But either way, whether once, twice, or thrice boiled, you're getting essentially the same dissolved oxygen levels, assuming you boil and steep the same way each time. Another factor in twice boiled water that may affect the flavor is higher concentration of impurities, which, as we already discussed in realistic tea making scenarios, isn't actually going to be much different than once boiled water. The only thing left would be the water picking up something from the kettle itself that affects the flavor, but again, as previously mentioned, 
mentioned. Studies have shown that while things like iron and nickel and the like do leach into foods in exceptionally small quantities while you heat them in something like a stainless steel container, this is not so much the case when discussing leaching in water alone. The bottom line on all of this is that whatever your position on whether twice boiled water does or does not affect the taste of tea, and if so, if it makes it taste better or worse to you, widespread claims, even from otherwise reputable sources that seem to imply twice boiled water will somehow give you possibly even cancer, is simply not correct. Twice boiled water simply isn't bad for you at all, unless your particular water source was already bad for you at the once boiled level. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, hit that thumbs up button below and don't forget to subscribe. Brand new videos every day of the week. And why not subscribe to Curiosity Stream, our fantastic sponsor. Month for free, 30 days for free even. Find that link to below. And as always, thank you for watching.